My name is Tony Bellew and I get my smile with condensing. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, I'm just debating whether to move into this office or not I don't know, like that What do you reckon Kev? Kev do you reckon will you uh, be at your villa all the time in Spain? But I can move in here. Fill porky pictures up. Take that crap Leeds United uh, picture down over there. Fill pictures of me and Frotch up. Mick Whale. Mick Whale and Josh. Two pictures of Dennis. Me and Rico. Be alright in here then. What do you reckon, Kev? Well, uh, we'll see. No window in here though. See, I don't hit it factory though. But, no window. Right. We'll do a video now. Um. We'll do a video now about my top 10 heavyweights in the world at the moment now everybody's top 10 when you pick a heavyweight everybody's top 10 seems to be different to everybody else's and it can cause, cause arguments in pubs I always find that I always find that uh, I always find that everybody's top ten. I always find that everybody's top ten is different to everybody else's, and somebody will say, "Oh, so and so is better than so and so," and it's a good debate in pub, isn't it? But. I've come up with a top 10 and I've wrestled with my conscience all night whether or not to put Dave Allen in it I'm only joking right, here's my top 10 and what I'm going to do out of my top 10 I'm going to tell you how many wins that these people have got over world champions former, current and future so, for instance, Yui Fury's beat Sam Sexton, hasn't he? No, he's never won a world title in his life. But down the line, Sam Sexton could win a world title, so that would be a win for Yui over a future world champion. So it's current, former, current and future. All right. Shout out to Robin Reed Multivit. So... Right, here's my top 10. In 10th place, oh, I'm going to tell you how many wins these people have had over world champions, former, current and future. And I'm also going to tell you who's been done for drugs, right? Okay, in 10th place, my 10th top 10, in 10th, Jarrell Miller. He's never had a win over a, a, a champion, former, current or future, and he's been done for drugs, but he gets in my top ten. Because after the first five, it's a bit weak, isn't it? Ninth place, Yui Fury. Yui's got a win over a former champion, Samuel Peter. Yui's been done for drugs, although there's a question mark on that. It's all shrouded in mystery, but they did accept a ban, didn't they? Number eight, if he aren't, no doubt Peter will inform me, he'll ring me and tell me, but I think they got done, didn't he, and Tyson. Eighth place, Pulev, he's beat one champion, 
And I don't think Pulaf's been done. I don't think so. I don't know. You might be able to tell me. I don't think Pulaf's been done. If he has been done, I'll come back and I'll add a few minutes to the video. Alright. Seventh, I've got Luis Ortiz. He's beat. He hasn't beat a champion yet, Luis Ortiz, who's, but he's been hard to match. Southpaw, Cuban, very skillful, powerful. He's been done for drugs twice. Dillian White, he's beat two well, former champions, Lucas Brown and Parker. And he's been done for drugs once and he's got one pending. In fifth place, Alexander Povetkin, he's beat four world champions former, current and future, and he's been done for drugs. Now, Alexander Povetkin, he's beat four. This puts it into perspective, doesn't it, when Vladimir Klitschko's beat over 20, Lennox Lewis 16. Do you see where I'm coming from? Is it a poor era? Yes. Tyson Fury, Boxwreck have got him number four, I've got him number four, he's my fourth best. Skill-wise, he's the best, but it, He's fourth at the moment. He's beat two champions, Vladimir Klitschko in his 40th year, and Steve Cunningham, a former champion at Cruiserweight, who stepped up to heavyweight, who were basically an old man at the time. So Tyson Fury, even his wins, we can pick holes in, can't we? And then when you go and look at who he's fighting next, Otto Wallin, and who he's just fought, Tom Swartz. What's going on here? Fighting man that don't fight. Has Tyson Fury been done for drugs? Yeah, he had a two year back date of ban. So out of my, well, I've got that six so far done for drugs. And Pulaf, I'm not sure about. So I can't find anything on Pulaf, but he could have been, but I'm not sure, so don't quote me on it. I've got Anthony Joshua in third place for the simple reason. He's beat four world champions. Uh, Charlie Martin, Vladimir, Parker and Povetkin, there is four. Yeah, you could say Charlie Martin were a gift. Vladimir were 40 odd. 41, nearly 42, wasn't he? And uh, Povetkin were, well he's 40, isn't he? In September Povetkin was 39 then. And Charlie and uh, Joseph Parker had not beat a champion at the time. Although now he's down as beating one, and he he'd beat Ruiz, but Ruiz... You know, at the time he'd, he'd not be a cha he wasn't a champion, wasn't he? he was a challenger. So Joshua's beat four, but he's not been done for drugs. I've got Andy Ruiz in second place for the simple reason that he beat Joshua, didn't he? And a lot of people said he beat Parker. Now Andy Ruiz has beat one world champion. Now, then you've got and he's not been done for drugs. Then you've got Wilder. He's tested more than anybody. He's not been done for drugs. And John Tay Wilder has got two wins over Bermain, Bermain Stavern, two. And he's got a drug, he's, he beat Ortiz, but Ortiz were only WBA interim champion. Although there was a rumour going around that Eddie Hearn were going to upgrade him to WBA champion, regular champion, but they never got round to it, did they? Because he wanted to keep him away from Joshua. So that's my top ten. Miller 10th, Yui Fury 9, Pool F8, Ortiz 7, Dillian White 6, Povetkin 5, Tyson Fury 4, Anthony Joshua 3, Andy Ruiz 2, Deontay Wilder 1. Deontay Wilder 1 because he's had loads of defences, he's been the champion for a year, he's been active, and he's, not, he's, he's icing people, isn't he? Icing people, he's just iced Brazil, he iced Luis Ortiz who Joshua won't fight. He iced Brazil, who Joshua took eight rounds with. So, and out of them ten, six have been done for drugs. But like I said, I don't know about Pulef, and I know Wilder, Ruiz, and Joshua have not been done, and I don't know about Pulef. So, six, and I don't know about Pulef. So, this is how I look at it, right? We are entering a poor era. Them ten guys there have beat 17, they've got 17 wins over world champions now. Vladimir Klitschko's beat more than that. Carl Froch should beat 10. So, are we entering an era where fighters 
they don't want to take risks, they want to protect their own and keep earning. If you're giving me a million pounds to fight Fred and it's an hard fight, if I can get 800,000 for an easy one and then another 800,000 for another easy one, I'm going to take the easy ones, aren't I? It's like the cock of the school. The cock of the school, when you're at school, never really fights anybody who's the second cock, does he? He's always giving people a backhander who are probably who are not even wanting to be cock at school. The one and number two, they never seem to fight, do they? You know that kind of thing. And I think that mentality, the schoolyard mentality, was spilled over into boxing. Tyson Fury, he said he was going to America to save America and to fly the flag for British boxing and show the Yanks how it's done fighting in America. Well, he's for oh, Wilder, Drew, he got dropped twice, his defence were all over the place. They're now saying he's a better fighter since then, but the Wilder fight, it's looking further away than ever. Tom Swartz and Otto Wallin, undefeated bums from Bum City. Tyson's words, but he's fighting them now. I notice all you Fury Power! All you Fury Powers are all very quiet, so leave me a nice comment, all you Fury Power fans. All my dislikes go up, don't they? When you say anything about Tyson. <laughs> we get statistics through all the time. And all, all my dislikes mainly come from Tyson Fury opinions. I'll just tell it as I see it. Fantastic boxer. Very funny kid in real life to me. Very funny. Masterful boxer. Very weak around the chin. That's why Peter Fury designed the style for him to protect his chin. Just like Emmanuel Stewart did for Vladimir Klitschko. Very weak around the chin, Tyson. Very strong heart. But weak around the whiskers. He doesn't get caught that much because he takes a few risks, but when he does get caught, what happens? Hey, it's the deck, doesn't it? And that will only get worse from now on in. He can't get better as a fighter. Credit to Ben Davidson. He's helped get that weight off, but Tyson were losing 7 and 8 stone in camp with Peter Fury, so what's he lost with Ben? 9 stone. What did he say he were? 27 stone, didn't he? He said he were. And what were he when he fought? 19. So that's eight stone. He was losing sevens when he was with Peter, seven and a half, six, seven and a half. So all this about he's lost ten stone. How has he lost ten stone? Ten stone would take Tyson down to seventeen stone, wouldn't it? Twenty-seven down to nineteen. That's eight stone. It's not ten. All right. So let's just get that fact right before the myth just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and takes on a life upon itself. He's lost eight stone and Ben Davidson's done nothing. He's, he's only done what Peter Fury had been doing all them years with him. But Tyson Fury with Peter Fury in the corner, in the ring, had never been dropped. Been dropped twice with Ben Davidson in the only fight that he's stepped up in. He got caught by Tom Swartz, didn't he? So Tyson Fury, in my opinion, and a lot of you people here won't want to say it because you're Tyson fans. And if you've ever met Tyson, you just look at it as, he's my man. I don't like that because Carl Frotch, you get blinded. Tyson's 31 in, in a couple of days. It's downhill from now on in. Riddick Bow were finished at 28. It's downhill from now on. So if you're getting caught with Wilder last year, twice, you're going to get caught again, aren't you? You're not going to be a better fighter, has it? Oh, we're only fighting at 60%. No. No, no, no. You trained for nearly two years non-stop. You're not fighting at 60%. Tyson was saying he was stronger, faster, quicker than the speeding bullet. Got dropped twice. Heavily, the second one, in the 12th. So Wilder carries his power all the way through, doesn't he? The next time he fights Wilder, I've heard on Grapevine, Wilder's just going to jump straight on him. Just going to jump straight on him. Maybe Tyson might jump on him. Well, let's see if he's going to throw some lever this time. Because he could have got Wilder out there and he would have been the greatest story ever. But, like I said, fighting on back foot got dropped. Twice. As a challenger away from home. He's there to 
fly the flag for Great Britain and to take the challenges on. Well, let's see the rematch. We want the rematch. All right. Well, I think Tyson's got more problems than enough on at the moment. We Otto Wallin. So, that'll be a pound for pound life and death, won't it? He's on a loser to note fighting Otto Wallin because if he gets clipped or gets dropped, people will say he's finished, won't they? That's how I look at it. And if he wins against Otto Wall, he knocks him out early, people will say you should have done that. And if it goes longer and he don't beat Otto Walling, what's people going to say then? They're going to say he's finished, can't pull the trigger. Me personally, I don't think Tyson Fury can pull the trigger watching him fight Wilder. I thought every time he looked like he was going to pull the trigger, he was frightened about what were coming back because he'd been feeling them on arms and that up to round nine. He got dropped in the eight, ninth. After then, he went back as a stayed out way. And when he got dropped in the 12th, for some reason, I think he knew he probably might have lost that fight, although it was a draw. And I had him up around, but I could see a draw. Everybody jumped on me. Oh, you, you can't, it's a great story, that. Forget the story. Forget the great story, the, the, the weight loss and the depression and all that. I told you it's all a load of knackers, in my opinion, that. All a load of crap. Forget the story. Look at the fight and score it as a neutral with a, with John Rawlins and Barry and Barry Jones as, as voices off. Don't listen to what we commentary on. Watch the fight and score it as a neutral. And I can see where the draw come from. And I can see a Fury win. I can't see a Wilder win, but I can't see a Wilder loss. Don't forget, you've got to rip the belt. When you rip the belt, you do what Tim Bradley did. He came to Nottingham. He fought Junior Witter and he ripped the belt off Witter. He dropped Witter and he fought hard and he won a split decision. Tyson didn't drop Wilder, did he? Didn't drop him. The rounds were very, very close. When you've got people landing three punches over like a guy landing five, the close rounds then. You saw Ray Tyson putting his hands up at the end of every round, the British commentators, John Rawlins and the other guy, Barry Jones, flying flag. They're employed by Frank Warren. You know, the bias in it were unbelievable. Now, did Tyson get robbed? No, it weren't a robbery. Should he have had the nod? Yeah, you could probably just give him a nod. But the two knock rounds away from home was a challenger fighting up back foot. That's just how it goes. That's cricket, I'm afraid. So, but, uh, no boxing, should I say. I'm only messing with you. So that's my top 10, 6 have been done for drugs, I don't know about pool left, that's just the way boxing is going at the moment, it's a bit of a joke isn't it really, but what can you do, it's uh, just how things are isn't it. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, and uh, like I said, uh, don't forget to subscribe, because when you subscribe you get your porky fix don't you, it comes straight to your phone, alright, thank you very much. Mm-hmm.